When I open Lightroom up, my first goal is to get the stuff in there. So we import stuff, and we did talk about that. But we also want to organize things, don't we? And we've talked about that. The next phase in a workflow inside of Lightroom is to edit the images. Now, let me just say something really quick about editing. There has not existed on this planet a photograph since the first camera was ever made that has not been edited. But when you take the photo, you're editing. You're changing the scene, you're zooming in, zooming out, changing exposure. That's editing. But Lightroom does so much more. Now, I've got something for you. Go into the Import button down here. Go into your Working folder, and you're going to find five images. Now, in keeping with the idea of organization to make it a habit, so when you do this and you import images in, you're beginning the organizational process, I'm going to come over to Keywords and type in Quivira. Now, it remembers that word from the last time I used it, so I don't have to type the whole word in. I'm going to type in a comma, and I'm going to type in the word Stafford. And again, I've typed that word before, comma, Kansas. And let's type in spring, because these were taken actually in the early spring. So I have some keywords. Get into the habit of doing that. Click import. This will not take long. And there they are. So we have the images in the library. We also have the ability to do some quick develop over here. I prefer working in the develop module. So we can choose one of these images, say like this one or this one down here, whatever. And then we can come up here to the word develop. Now there is, in my opinion, a workflow to what you do when you're editing. You start out with some of the obvious things that are not that hard to do because if you can't accomplish them, why are you wasting your time color correcting something if you can't use it? Now the thing I love about Lightroom, they thought this through. The tools over here are almost like in the order of what you would use from one to the other going down to complexity from simplicity. Like number one, you have a cropping tool right here. Now maybe I want to crop in on that deer, so I select that tool. I can come over to a corner, and I can come in and I can choose any aspect ratio that I want. I can then come over to the image itself and do something like that, eliminate some of the distractions, if you will. I can come over here and choose custom in terms of an aspect ratio. Like maybe I'm going to print this on a five by seven sheet of paper. And now when I go to a corner, it stays in the aspect ratio of five by seven. If I like what I see, I can click the done button right here. Expands the deer out some, eliminates some of the distractions. Let's go over down here and pick up, say, this one right here. Now, in this one, let's talk about straightening the image out, the horizon. So if I come back over here and pick up my crop tool, come over and hold down the command key. That's the control key in Windows Command on a Mac. And you see, I can straighten it out. And again, if I double click, I've got a straighter horizon. So some of the tools you're going to be using at the beginning are tools like cropping to get the image you want, straightening the image out doing things like red eye. You do have some interesting tools over here for adjustment. For example, this one right here does a gradient filter. And if I select that tool, watch what happens. This is pretty cool. I'm going to get right about here, and I'm going to drag down. Now, I want the lighter part on the other side. Now, if you're trying to make it match that horizon, it's kind of hard to do from here. So you can come over here until you see that arrow go bent, and it makes it easier to do this. And then maybe come down here, and we can move that down a little bit. And maybe put that right in the center, a little bit above. Now, what does this do? Well, if I come over here, I can adjust exposure. Now, watch what happens. It only adjusts the exposure of the area that is inside that gradient. Now, you can also do radials and even paint if you want to. Interesting tools. Now, if you don't want to see that line, you can come over here. You have always show it auto, which means if you're in the image, show it. If you're not, take it away. When you select it, if you've got more than one or never, I'm going to go to auto. See, we can come out of the image and then we can see the actual image itself. Now, if you want to see the before and the after, press the backspace key. Now, there are other things that we can do to this image, but as you go down through these items, 
tonal curves, hue saturation and lightness, color control, changing individual colors, changing it into black and white if you want to, split toning, detail, lens correction, transformation and effects. Now I will say one thing about Lightroom. It's got some really good tools for correcting what you just saw. The better tools for transformation and effects are in Photoshop, which would be a reason if I was going to do that, I'd jump between the two programs. Again, if you like what you see, you can click Done right here. Lightroom contains a ton of excellent editing tools, and the best place to find them is right here in the Develop module. Remember to create a workflow as you edit, doing some of the things like cropping and straightening before you get into the more difficult things like color correction. Even in editing, there's a workflow. I want to thank you for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.